Thank you for joining me today and welcome to the Virtual Coffee Lab. The auto mode is a common feature on a lot of new home coffee roasters. The Hot Top has it, the Bullet has it, the Be More has had it for years. Uh, and I'm sure that there's others that have the auto mode as well. And the auto mode allows a new home coffee roaster or anyone to be able to press a couple of buttons, have a profile set, and the roaster will just go ahead and follow that profile and roast the coffee for you. That's a great thing. And so today I want to focus on the pros and cons of the auto mode. In my case, I have a Be More coffee roaster, so I'm going to be talking from the perspective of a Be More roaster. But if you have a roaster or are considering one that has an auto mode, these would apply to you as well. First, I've used the auto mode, and I am a fan of the auto mode, have no problems with it at all, but I want to go through the pros and cons of this just to kind of compare and outline really what is going to be most helpful for a home coffee roaster. All right, let's get to the list. First, it's easy for first-time home coffee roasters. You can literally open up a box, pull the roaster out, go through some of the initial seasoning that the manufacturer requires, and after that, you can start roasting coffee. Follow the instructions, and it's pretty clear. As a matter of fact, you can take a look at this image here, and I'll be showing this a couple of times. This is an instruction for the Beemore for the auto mode. And it tells you, you know, based on the amount of coffee you're going to put in the roaster, the type of coffee you're going to put in the roaster, it recommends a power setting, which is good. And immediately you can be roasting coffee and, and begin enjoying the hobby. All right, the second point is that there really isn't much of a learning curve to get started. Like I mentioned, it's just a matter of reading a few instructions and having the coffee available and following the directions, pushing a few buttons, and you've roasted some coffee. The end result is something that we're going to be talking about, but for the beginner, or for somebody who really doesn't want to learn much about roasting coffee at home or improving their roasts, the auto mode is a great feature. Now, for those that have what I would call smart roasters, and those are able to follow a profile, a profile that you can download from the internet or that comes with the roaster preloaded, whatever those profiles are, um, that's a great thing and again the benefit is is that you really don't have much of a learning curve you can just go ahead and follow that profile load that um, load that program load that profile and get going with roasting coffee and have some great results especially some of the professionals that are out there have even loaded some of their own uh, profiles out onto some of these different forums or whatever the proprietary um, holding places for those profiles for some roasters like say the Akawa roaster. They have their own repository for shared profiles. All right the next pro is during this process of using the auto mode the home coffee roasting operator is exposed to terminology and is exposed to all of the different things that are happening with the roast. In the case of the Beemore, they're exposed to different power settings and understanding how those power settings will influence their, their roast as they go along. They're introduced to the timer and how to operate the timer and change the length of time, um, whether they've hit first crack or not or after dry. And it's, it's a great way to start to get into the hobby. It's a great way to start to be exposed to some of the concepts of roasting coffee at home and that's a great benefit for the person who has a smart roaster again you're going to be able to see most likely you're going to be seeing your profile in something like artisan or some type of logging software that is going to expose you to phase times and rate of rise and all of the different terminology that more advanced coffee roasters may use they're also exposed to the different weights and how those weights will impact the roasting times and the overall roasting profile. So the auto mode is a great benefit for new home coffee roasters or those who are trying to learn more about roasting but don't want to have full control of the roaster. So I did an experiment in the auto mode with my Be More. And again, try to be thinking in terms of your roaster if you're using a different roaster.
But the auto mode for the Beamore has really three or four options, P1, P2, P3, and P4. Um, P1 is the most powerful setting, and depending upon the density of the coffee, the instructions tell you to pick a certain power setting or a, a certain profile setting. Taking a look at this chart, you'll see I'm using a high-density coffee, which is a Guatemalan Weiwei. I'm going to be roasting a half a pound of this. I'm pre-warming the roaster to 200 degrees, and it's going to give me a 12-minute roast time for a half a pound setting. And I followed the instructions, pre-warmed the roaster, put the beans in the roaster, hit P1, hit start, and off to the races we go. Some really interesting surprises uh, came about with this profile because it's supposed to be the most powerful profile. P1 has the most powerful profile and it took 7 minutes and 45 seconds to get to yellow. That's a long time. 54% of the total roast time was devoted towards yellow. The browning phase was 27% and that took 4 minutes and 8 seconds to get through the browning phase. And then the development phase took 2 minutes and 20 seconds. 17% of the roast was the development. And the total roast time was 14 minutes and 20 seconds. What I ended up with was a darker roast than I wanted. I didn't even reach the full 20%. But I reached a darker roast profile that I wanted. It was pretty dark. wasn't second crack. And it was kind of a flat coffee. It was dark it was maybe a little chocolatey and there was no acidity there was really no excitement in the cup it was kind of a boring cup of coffee again some of this is subjective it's my opinion but ultimately the flavor profile was low and slow it was a uh, as a matter of fact the roaster never really got over 280 degrees and the fan turned on on the be more turned on at uh, the five minute mark and I lost like 25 or 30 degrees. I went down to like 250 degrees and then had to work my way back up. And I couldn't touch buttons the whole time. I'm just watching this auto mode go. And I was wishing I had more power. And it just 280 degrees. And that's why I ended up with a 14 minute and 20 second roast. So not really a great roast as far as I'm concerned. But for a new home coffee roaster who is using... Uh, store-bought coffee, or even trying to roast coffee in a device that they don't have a lot of control with, uneven roasts, um, real short roast times, I'm thinking like a hot air popcorn popper that's not modified, or something like that. I'm sure somebody will complain that they get great roasts with the popcorn popper, and that's awesome if you do. Um, but yeah, the the 14 minute and 20 second roast uh, is is a great thing for a new home coffee roaster because they've just roasted coffee. But after a while, they're going to want more. The home coffee roaster is going to want to get a little more excitement out of their cup, and they're going to need to leave that auto mode to do that. So the Monsoon Malabar, low-density coffee. Taking a look at the chart here, uh, it's a P3 setting or a P4 setting for the low-density coffee. I chose P3, pre-warmed to 200 degrees and the roaster i knew that this was going to take a long time the roaster set for 18 minutes my total roast time it was 16 minutes and 30 seconds for the monsoon malabar at p3 here's the breakdowns of the percentages it was 57 and a half percent dry 27 and a quarter browning and 15 percent development it was that 15 percent development i was actually Right on the edge, a second crack started when I hit the cool button and opened the door on the Beamore. The roast took so long to build up its heat, and when it finally did, and that momentum was there right at the end of the roast, it was right when second crack was starting, and it it was too dark for me. It was uh, I drank the coffee, I tried it. It was very dark, um, had some oils on it, and it was... Um, something that I wouldn't normally desire in a coffee. I know there are Monsoon Malabar fans out there, um, and I've tried uh, coffee, I've tried the Monsoon, I've got a video on that, which was a little bit more like a medium to medium dark roast. That wasn't nearly anything like this. This was not good at all. It was just dark water, 
that was bitter and it really wasn't good. So some of that may have been the coffee, but I'm chalking a lot of that up to this P3 profile that I don't see why anybody would want to have a roast that long. But again, that's my opinion. Um, we, you may have a different experience, but I wouldn't recommend it. But that's what you get when you use an auto mode. And that's okay. The auto mode, again, as I pointed out, the pros, it's to help you. It's a crutch to help you learn. It's to get you started quick. It's to help you understand what's happening to your coffee while you are roasting it. It's allowing you to see what how the beans change and what the behavior is like with these beans, with the, with the heat being applied. So that's all a good thing. So why am I saying all of this? Well, there are people that are ordering these roasters and they have an expectation. They want to be able to roast some really good coffee. And whether it's uh, a Beemore or some other machine, the auto mode uh, is only going to do so much for you. Now, if it's a smart machine, the auto mode, you could live with that and you could roast some great coffee with these smart roasters that follow profiles. And you're going to have great coffee for as long as that roaster operates. But as far as the learning goes and the growing and the experimenting, at some point you're going to need to step out from the automatic button. And that's what I wanted to conclude with today with this point. Um, it's kind of a saying that my dad said. He said, uh, some people make things happen. Other people watch what happened. And the third type of person wonders what just happened. And so that's kind of how it is when it comes to roasting coffee, right? There are, there are some who have a desire to learn. They want to grow, and so they're making things happen. And those that are watching things happen are the people in the auto mode, and um, they're trying to understand and learn and just be exposed and experience what home coffee roasting is all about. And then there's the third person who's wondering what just happened. And that person needs a lot of help. Some of my videos may be helpful for that type of person. That's not you, of course. I'm not talking about you. But truthfully, we all start out as that person wondering what just happened, don't we? We all start out as somebody who really doesn't have a clue. We burn our coffee. We make lots of mistakes. And that's the process of learning how to roast coffee. And we don't get that as much when we use the auto mode. All right, the cons for the auto mode. You just saw the two profiles and the end results of that. So those are cons. You don't have control of your roast. Uh, I really desired to have more power to get me to move through this roast quicker uh, with the Guatemalan and the Monsu Malabar and the settings that the instructions provided and even the most powerful setting on the Be More for the auto mode wasn't enough to give me what I would consider to be a really good profile um, or even a chance to get a good profile because it only maxed out around 280 degrees and then the fan kicked on. So cons are that you're going to be stuck with mediocre coffee results with the, the Be More or with any coffee roaster that is um, just using an auto mode. Smart roasters, it's a different story altogether. Um, you can roast some great coffee right off the shoot with that, and, and so that's a good thing. But the con is, is that there are limitations when we go into the auto mode on some of these other roasters, the limitations being the control of the heat, the amount of time, and ultimately the profile that you're left with. You're at the mercy of whatever the machine is doing. All right, so the takeaway is that the auto mode is your friend, and it's a great way to start roasting coffee at home, but at some point you're going to want to break out away from that and go into the manual mode. For those that have smart roasters, are you using the auto mode or a profile that you're following with your smart roaster? Is it a profile that you have made yourself, or is it a profile that you just downloaded? And how is that affecting your ability to learn how to roast coffee? I'm curious about that. If you wouldn't mind sharing some of those comments, that would be awesome. Also, for those that roast on a Beemore or some other roaster that I'll call a dumb roaster with an auto mode button, these roasters are great to start out. Are you still using the auto mode button? And if so, why? Um, I would be interested to know about that. Share your thoughts about your experience if you tried to use the manual mode and you had problems. And we can talk about that. 
You use the auto mode as a crutch to learn and grow and then move into manual roasting and experiment with manual roasting. I've got a video up here on the Be More recipe in a manual mode. I also have an espresso roast uh, link that is there as well that you can check out. And I have another video with a hive called Taking Control of Your Roast. Check that out as well. I thank you guys for being here today. If you like what you heard, hit the like button for me, would you? Thanks for joining me today, and we'll see you next time here at the Virtual Coffee Lab.